programs live on our website and that's on www.grts.gm. There you can also monitor GRTS radio live. Time now to take our first break. We'll be right back. GRTS Digital FM on 98.6 and 102.6, the best FM station in town where you can capture hundreds and thousands of potential customers with a wider coverage around the country. Advertise today and get your targeted customers. For more information, call 9933263-9957255 or 4497331 and 9906445. GRTS Digital FM. Welcome back. Greece is one place where citizens are learning all about political decisions impacting people's life and outside the corridors of power. A crisis is brewing on the streets of Athens. As we hear in this report by CNN, a generation of Greeks are now living without shelter. Scenes like this would have been a rarity until a few years ago. But this is Greece's new street of despair. There are the new homeless, a new generation of the street, who until recently had a shelter, job, and a mortgage. You don't need to look very far to see the country's financial crisis is rapidly turning into a social one. In just one year, soup kitchens have seen a 20% rise in the number of people who rely on them for their daily food. Uh, there are people uh, who came here for the first time. Uh, is, uh, they are new poors and uh, they lose their jobs from the crisis. Uh, the, they are pensioners uh, who goes down the incomes. And uh, now the only place uh, where we, they feel safe is here to take some food. 51-year-old Yorgos Befanis is one of these people. He's been coming here every day for the past year. His story paints a picture of the crisis to hit Greece. Until a few years ago, he had a job as a baker, but the company had to downsize as demand dropped due to the recession. When we had the money, we didn't manage it properly. We are here now begging for a plate of food. If someone told me 10 years ago that I would be here, I would have taken it as a joke, if nothing worse. Thousands of people have lost their jobs as a result of the financial crisis in Greece and an increasing number are finding it difficult to pay their bills. And for some, there's little choice but to sleep rough on the streets. Many of these new homeless are people who have been made redundant in the last couple of years. Unemployment has skyrocketed by over 6% in three years and is forecast to go higher in Greece largely due to the massive cuts in the bloated public sector. A prerequisite by the country's lenders for Greece to continue receiving the money of a bailout package to prevent it from defaulting on its debts. Yorgos Barkouris, a musician, has been living at this shelter operated by an NGO for a month now. He says there are thousands like him who have not been as fortunate as to find a bed. I live here. I sleep here in this bed. And uh, every night you see all the people that had no bed, no shelter, to go out. There are many people. And uh, it's shocking because you can't imagine where are they going now? Where are they going to sleep to prote protect their, themselves? It's, for me, it's shocking and I'm homeless. The NGOs say homelessness is 25% higher than last year, placing numbers at around 20,000. The government says it is conducting a study to get the exact figure. In the last year, there has been a 40% decrease in hospital spending. And at the same time, there's been a twofold increase in admissions, as people can no longer afford private care. Add to that the 2012 budget, which foresees more cuts in health spending. The government says next year there may be less money, but promises it will be better managed enabling them to do more with less. We believe the cuts in spending should not be the problem. We are approaching the issue of restructuring the financial management of the capital we already have. To yesterday's homeowners, who are today faced with living on the streets and on handouts, these words 
are of little relief. Elinda Labropoulou, CNN, Athens. Iran has aired videos of what it claims is a downed U.S. drone. Pictures of a relatively good-looking drone propped on a pedestal were shown on Iranian state television. Meanwhile, there appears to be confusion at the Pentagon over whether the drone was the real U.S. 12 or just a propaganda ploy. CNN's Chris Lawrence takes a closer look at the ranging controversy. New video on Iranian TV shows what Iran says is a U.S. drone that crashed within its borders. But by putting it out on state TV for all to see, Iran has sparked a CSI-type investigation into its prized capture. Within the Pentagon, uncertainty. We haven't recovered the drone that we believe is missing. One U.S. official says they can't be 100% certain it's real, but it would be hard to fake. A second official says flat out the drone was not designed to survive a crash like that intact from high altitude. You can almost see it here. You can see some dents um, along the leading edge, and probably the undersurface you know, might well be pretty, uh, pretty banged up. Analysts disagree, too. Bill Sweetman thinks it's real. The drone wasn't shot down and could have glided to Earth in what Sweetman calls a falling leaf descent. And so, you know, you'd see, in that case, fairly limited damage. Globalsecurity.org analyst John Pike calls what Iran showed off nothing more than a parade float. He says the wings here droop down, whereas in most pictures of the Sentinel, the wings are positioned higher for better stability. The bigger question, what was the drone doing when it crashed? A U.S. official says it was a CIA mission, strictly to search for insurgents in Afghanistan, near the border. But several sources point out the Sentinel is a stealth drone, designed to penetrate areas with air defenses. They say it's hard to believe the drone was strictly operating over Afghanistan, which has none. So it could have been used in Iran, it could have been deliberately used in Iran, and it's uh, very likely, in fact, that it was a uh, reconnaissance platform of choice uh, to do precisely that. A U.S. official says satellite footage shows the drone's wreckage to be a pile of rubble. So Iran does have what's left of the drone, but in what condition is the issue? Chris Lawrence, CNN. And now over to some sports. The Banjul Stan defending champion Salakunda East won nil in the opening fixture of this year's Zonal Championship. Former under-17 striker Buba Sama scored the all-important goal to sell one of the biggest contests of the competition. Our Babuka Senga reports the opening fixture at the East Ground was watched by a huge number of football fans. Rose down the gauntlet to the rest of their rivals as they attempt to win this year's prestigious journal competition. The city side engaged defending champions Serekunda East at the East Grounds. It is one of a host of glamour ties the Gambia Football Association hopes will help promote their grassroots football development agenda. The Zonal Football Championship is a popular tournament among local fans, and the massive turnout on this match day confirms its appeal with the communities involved. The youthful Banjul side took the lead in the first half. Boasama, who has until recently seen his career stalled, showed the watching public what he is made of. The boy who hails from Tallinn took aim at goal from distance, smacking in a ferocious long-range effort. That goal stunned the Serekunda is faithful. The players, among them some of the country's top local players, struggled to impose themselves on the city side. Former under-17 stars Buba Jalo and Lamin Sajo Samate kept the Banjul defense busy all evening with their incisive runs, but were left frustrated by their inability to fasten clear-cut chances. Serekunda East made a triple substitution early in the second half, a move that injected new peace in the team's attack. Banjul dug deep and kept defending ferociously against the backdrop of a late East onslaught. Despite fastening some decent chances late on, the East side could not break through the resolute Banjul defense, and the City Boys celebrated wildly upon hearing the final whistle. One nil it ended. But the significance of the victory and the manner in which the city boys went about it will solely send the rest of the zones on red alert. The city crushing machine is back and are in real business mood. For Jartes, Bodies, Babukar Senghor.